here today, uh, playing very well on camera earlier. I uh, don't think it's all about luck and magic as we know. There's a good amount of it, but however, there's skill in this game too. We'll see if men can play you know, on that tightrope because you really need to against these Boris decks. Well, we are going to be underway here, our quarterfinals. Don't forget that after this game is over, we'll bring it back to the booth. We'll be doing our question for the Star City Games three-month premium giveaway. I'll be asking it. I'll be explaining it. Excuse me. Shane will be asking it as Bernie is going to play two one-drops in Boros Elite and Dried Militant. Get the ball rolling here. So, you know, one of the powers of the Boros deck is that Brave the Elements is going to blink a removal spell, and Boros Charm can blank the old, uh, blank the old Supreme Verdict. As we, as we are being informed right now that Bernie is on a mulligan to six. So not doing so bad, though. Pretty aggressive start with the Militant and the Elite. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Min, again, is playing a tap land on turn two. It's rough because, Esper, you have to do that. Uh, you, shocking yourself is not the best way to go, especially if you have a Doom Blade and then a Supreme Verdict. You're actually not net losing or you're not really net gaining any life uh, by shocking yourself for a Doom Blade when you're setting up the Supreme Verdict turn later anyway. Azorius Arrestor comes into play, not going to take care of anything, and now you've got the Detention Sphere taking care of the Boros Lee, taking care of the one power guy as opposed to a two power guy. How do you feel about that? I think it's right. It will become three power pretty quickly there, so definitely saves a little bit of life here. Uh, men's cards, and like you said you know, a while back, is that you're just going to waste a card to gain two life, mm -hmm. waste a card to gain three life, and just all you have to do is survive. And Robert really... You may the, the aggro days of old where you hold back creatures, I think those are dead. I think you honestly just can't really play around much. I think these decks are built to guy, 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 attack, and you really can't just say, you know what, I'm not going to do that. So you see Bernie here, he played his Sacred Foundry untapped. Tran currently sitting at 13, and the Tension Sphere is going to come down for a little two-for-one action. If you had the Brave the Elements here, it would be, uh, it would be pretty great. gross. But I don't think so. I think he has Boris Charm, and that's why he shocked mm, himself. But. Yep. So he was ready for a Supreme Verdict, but he was not ready for a second Detention Sphere. So now Bernie is going to say, upstairs with my Boros Charm, put you down to nine, quickly untap my Arrestor, get into the red zone. Maybe we've seen a Johnny? Nope, just an attack for two with the Arrestor. Put you to seven, follow up play his frontline medic, say go. So now he's hoping to dodge the old, uh, dodge the Verdict here and probably dodge a couple other things yeah, too. Yeah, I think he has Blood Baron here. I think he was trying to dodge that. That's a two of in the main deck for Tran, and Bernie is not able to dodge that. So now... Those main deck Blood Barons that people have been incorporating because of Mono Black Devotion showing up here happen to be good in this matchup too. Yeah, and uh, barring a Brave the Elements Boros Charm here, uh, Robert's going to be... Uh-oh. Oh, There's dude. an attack puts him to two. So you said barring those combination of cards. Well, that was step one. Yes, yeah, step There's one. There's the Brave the Elements, but does not have the <laughs> Boros Charm. That was actually pretty scary. Yeah, yeah. Blood Baron going to come across for four. Going to put Bernie down to 14, but for Tran, more importantly, he's going up to six. Yeah, Min uh, also has two heroes downfall in his hand. He can only cast one, I think, mm -hmm. from the black mana. Uh, it's kind of like the old uh, Anger of the Gods in Blue White Red. You just don't have the mana for it. And Hero's downfall is another tough one. He's going to try to shoot down the frontline medic. That's going to get the job done is the downfall. So Tran going to go down to four. Does Bernie have a Boros Charm? He's got a replacement frontline medic, so he passes the turn back. Blood Baron is going to push Tran up to eight. And I think if you're Tran, you want to fire off in the main phase here, right? Yeah. Don't want to get, do not want to get hit by a uh, Brave Element. So down goes the Medic, in comes the Blood Baron. Bernie down at 10, Tran up to 8, and Blood Baron is looking to get this game over with all by itself. And it's uh, not far off. I mean, Robert's had a few opportunities to draw Boris Charm to kind of end this game, but now it's looked like he's not going to have it. So, all right, Johnny, here we go. Uh-oh. Oh, he's here into Johnny. Yeah. yeah. So Johnny comes into play. And now, so Tran's going to go down. He was at 8, so he's going to go down to 7. He's going to go down to 5 now. But Blood Baron's going to come through, and it's actually going to attack a Johnny. Yeah, he I like that. You yeah. don't want to get double striked out of this game. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. All right. So someone's going to get, not going to get double striked out, but they're going to get revelationed out. That's yeah. what's going to happen here. Yeah, this is uh, not looking too hot mm -hmm. here for Bernie. And I Tran confidently passing the turn back after a revelation there for five. So Bernie sitting at 10 life. He does have the Johnny out there. But now Blood Baron has done a nice job of bridging the gap so the Tran can actually draw and resolve a revelation. And now we're getting into the late stages of the game, which is obviously where the Esper player wants to be. Yep, yep. We've survived the initial onslaught. We've gained a ton of life. I mean, I wonder what life Min is actually at. <laughs> yeah. Minus the life link, it's probably deep in the negatives. So we'll see if uh, Min can actually wrap this up cleanly. You see, he's going to start by playing a Temple of Silence, going to scry. 
reorganize those lands a little bit here and then decide what he wants to do with them. I think we'll also see an attack here from the Blood Baron eventually going towards either that of Johnny or, or upstairs, try to get this game over with. Yeah. Here is a Jace Architect of Thought, so that's going to come into play. It's going to go up, get the Ajani out of here, says Min. He's going to gain four more life, push himself up to 14. Healthy life, so. Yep. And he actually has a verdict in his hand. There's no reason to cast it because this Blood Baron is just running amok here. Yeah. He also has another revelation in his hand. He has a Zora's Charm in his hand. He's just got everything. Yeah, I think Charm is the big one, too, because the Charm is an actual time walk right now. Yeah. So he's going to put the Zora's Rester back on top of the deck. That's just a glorified 2 one. Can't target the Blood Baron, of course. And Bernie says, attack your Jace. There's a Precinct Captain and pass the turn back. And if you're attacking Jace in the situation, you are in a losing situation. Yeah, there's just nothing he can really do. He slams Elspeth at the top. He's trying to entice a concession by Robert, but uh, Robert will battle to the end, to the very end. Yeah, you see Tran's going to organize his mana. There is Elspeth. Here come three soldier tokens to go along with the Blood Baron and that Jace. Likely going to see that Jace tick on up, and, you know, he's uh, he's in the sleeper hold right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's trying to make him tap out. Yeah. So, uh, right now it's not working. Robert's like, uh-uh, I'm still in this game. What's your What's your favorite submission move? Uh, Probably, let's see, i got to go back in time here. Maybe the see, Boston uh, Crab. Or the figure four. Ooh, the figure four. Figure four uh, is good. fan favorite. Uh, the Crippler Crossface. I remember uh, back yep. in WCW. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, that is a good one, too. So the, the the leg drop was the lamest. Well, that's not a submission hold. That's just a Oh, finisher. you're talking about the finisher. Yeah, uh, yeah submission just, just a submission just hold. Just a submission hold. hold. Okay. I don't think you can submit anyone with the leg drop. We're going to yeah. bring it back. I'll let you <laughs> think about it for a little bit. We're going to think about it here. Um... Quick update on the Chilbert versus Brady match. That's going to game number three. That's blue-white control versus green-red devotion. So don't know if we're going to cut over there. We might have to move someone over, uh, what have you. But what we do know is that Mintran is up a game with Esper over Robert Bernie playing a Boros. But it's uh, trivia time, my friend. All right. So I'm going to explain the rules really quickly, and I'll let you ask the question. Cool. All right. Don't make it too tough. I'll make it as easy as I can. All right. I appreciate it. No problem. Uh, very quickly, this guy's going to ask you a question. You're going to tweet your answer with the hashtag of SCG Premium on the Twitter sphere, and we will draw one winner from the people who do get it correct. So it is about accuracy, not speed because we will announce the winner at the conclusion of our quarterfinals this evening. So, Shaheen, fire away. Okay. Uh, so there's a good amount of Esper we've seen around. Yeah. Lately, local tournaments in this top eight as well. We see a bunch of blue-white control decks. Mm -hmm. So the question for the audience there yes. is, we'll make it an easy one for the first one. Okay. okay. What is the win condition of control nowadays. Okay. There's one that's in all the decks. Yep. It's in blue white, it's in Esper, it's in blue white red. It's hands down the best. Nobody can not play it. You have to incorporate it somehow, or your chance of winning are pretty much zilch yep. in the control deck. So, what is that win condition? All right. It's much for you guys. If you can name that win condition of the Sphinx's Revelation decks, tweet your answer. Hashtag SCG Premium. And again, we will announce the winner at the conclusion of our quarterfinals. And we do appreciate you guys watching as we're going to cut back to our match. We're taking a look at the sideboards here, Side my board friend. Time. You're the Esper player, so you're going to go second. I'm the I'm the Boros kind of mm -hmm. guy, so I'll take a look at Bernie's here first. He's sure. got three copies of, of Banishing Priest, Spanisher Priest, excuse me. Two copies of Gifts of Resolve, two Pacifism, a Warlord Helix, a Renounce the Guilds, an Act of Treason, Mizium Mortars, a Wear Terror, a Glare of Heresy, and two copies of Burning Earth. Burning Earth, obviously, is the easy one. That's, of course, going to come in. Wear Terror, I think, is also going to join us because that can take care of Detention Sphere, which was monumental in that game for Tran, to being able to two-for-one on those uh, dried militants. And, of course, Glare of Heresy can also take care of the old detention sphere. It can also take care of Elspeth, too, if the situation arises. And I think the other one we'll see is a Singleton Museum Mortars, because Blood Baron of the Scope is a real problem, and as we do move over to the sideboard here for Tran, you'll see that there is a, there's an additional one along, those, along with those two in the main deck. Okay, yeah, I agree with that. And I, I see on the other side we're going to have Blood Baron of the Scope come in number three. Obviously very good. Here's one that I'm wondering. Okay, yeah. Obviously, Soldier of the Pantheon is going to come in. It's pretty good against blocking, and it does things for you, gains a little bit of life. But Sin Collector is a card typically used for control decks. But in this deck, you, they have four Brave the Elements and four Boros Charms. Uh -huh. So you really want to see their hand on turn three before you Verdict, and then pull one of those out. Because if you have a Verdict and Sin Collector in your hand, you're probably going to be in good shape that game. Because you can play it on turn three, you can see their hand, take a Boros Charm out, and then you can play Verdict. I don't know if there's enough cards you can cut to incorporate a card like that. But looking at his deck, uh, you got a few things that are not the best in the world. Uh, I think that cards like Thought Seize, might be similar in the situation as Sync Collector. But Sync Collector chumps and absorbs some damage. I don't know if it's uh -huh. as, as good, if not. It also doesn't hurt you as well. So you could possibly cut Thought Seize. Um, maybe Aetherling, and we're just going on the back of Blood Baron itself. I like that plan a yeah, lot. Yeah, I think uh, Aetherling's a little slow. Uh, 
compared to Blood Baron, of course, who's pro that deck. Um, and those are cards that are possibly cut. So I mean, I like lowering the curve a lot, given the option. I'm actually a big fan of Morning Instinct Collector, because what happens a lot in this matchup is that the, uh, the Boros deck is holding a, a Boros Charm or a Bravey Elements to, for a blowout or for indestructibility or protection from a loose spell or something like that. And I know that uh, from playing Boros this week, if I had ever been targeted by a Sin Collector, I would not be a happy man. No, especially not. Especially because that's the skill of the Boros deck, is to set that perfect play up where I can get enough pressure on you and then stop you from your turn four answer to what I'm doing. Yeah. So I would like Sin Collector a lot, and I also wouldn't be surprised to see Soldier of the Pantheon going, because again, you lower your curve, you make it so that you can just trade with a guy, and the later the game goes, the more it does favor you as an Esper player, because all you need to do is resolve one Blood Baron, and it's pretty much lights out, as yeah, we saw yeah. in that first game. And looking at Cyborg, he really didn't, still doesn't have many answers to Blood Baron. He has Amizium Mortar. Yeah, he's Singleton Mortars, that's it. Yeah, it looks like Min's going to smulligan to six here. Yeah, Tran is going to go down to at least six cards here. So if you're burning here, of course, please with your opponent taking a mulligan here. But it doesn't mean it's over for Tran, who is up a game, of course. Again, our Chilbert versus Brady match, blue-white control versus green-red devotion. They're already in game number three. And we will let you guys know when we do find out how Toby playing Boros versus Lacombe playing red-white devotion is doing. That's our three versus six. As well as our two versus seven, McGuffey playing blue-white control against Fane playing mono-blue devotion. So... Some uh, interesting decks here in the top eight. Um, one deck that you don't find that I think it's a, it's on the decline right now, my friend. Mono Black Devotion. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those decks that, it's just the wave. You know, you play Mono Black and then you run into a couple red decks and you don't want to play Mono Black anymore. Yeah. It's just tough. You run into a Boris deck, you don't want to play Mono Black anymore. You see, uh, control decks kind of adapting to you playing Blood Baron in the main deck, along with other things like Detention Spheres as a four of. It, it's tough, and it's it's one of those things where. Do you like to play against all this hate? Do you feel like you still have a chance to win? If not, people are bound and staring to ditch those decks and just play something completely different. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to start here on a turn number one. The Dry Militant's going to come into play. Attack for two. You saw the Tran just did a scry here, and he did bring in Sin Collector. There's one in his hand. We'll see what Bernie's follow-up play is going to be, and it's going to be a couple more one-drops, and this is a great start, especially if Tran doesn't have a removal spell. But he's very quickly going to tap some mana, and now there is a Doomblade to take care of the Boros Elite, so he does have something. But Bernie's still in good shape here. He's got two, two power one-drops. Yep, and Sync Collector can block Dry Milton here, so it's going to be a pretty good turn for mid next turn. Yep. Depending on what Robert does here, and a Johnny would be backbreaking. Um, we'll see if he actually has it. Yeah, he's got some, you know, if you're Bernie, you really, really, really got to pressure Tran here. You got to get that ball rolling, because even though he is on a mulligan, you want to just pressure the heck out of him. And you see Tran is smart enough to cast his spells on his main phase. You know, Doomblade right away. Don't want to get blown up by Brave Elements or a Boros Charm. So Bernie says, all right, I'm going to start by attacking for four. I'm going to play a Temple of Triumph. Scry. Consult my hand. Put that card to the bottom and see if he does have a follow-up play. And he does in Precinct Captain. So a great start here for the Boros player. Yep. And it looks like he has a Hollowed Fountain here. He has Detention Sphere, Blood Baron, Azorius Charm, Sync Collector. So Min's got all the tools. It looks a little land light. Um, and I can see Min easily coming back in this game as long as he draws a couple of lands to play Blood Baron. So he's going to pay two life, and we're going to probably see a Sin Collector here. I mean, he might play Detention Sphere. I need he's in Detention Sphere. And Min's like, yeah, you gain a life. You got it. Gain that life. All right, so Robert tapping three. What do we got? We'll find out. Oh, there's a Mutavolt. Mutavolt's a big one. I think it's an Ajani, and it is an Ajani. So the Sphere took care of the Precinct Captain. Bernie did gain a life, of course. But now, you know, where are you going to put this counter? That's a big question because, we, again, we know about Sin Collector, and he wants to put it on the Soldier as yeah. opposed to Dry Militant. So in for five. Put Tran down to seven. And I think what's going to be big in this game, Shaheen, is there is the Sin Collector. Bernie says, I have a Sacred Founding. I don't have much. But what's going to be big this game is that he had to take two from the Hall of Fountain. That's a big yeah, deal. That's a big deal. And he misses fourth land drop, so mm -hmm. we're probably going to see the end of the game here. Yeah, actually, what we're going to see, I, I believe, is he's going to activate Mutavolt. He can jump the uh, the Soldier. Yeah, and that's and that's lethal. six right in the air. That's, that's, uh, that's lethal. That's yep. six, seven, eight. It's six, it's six in the air from the Soldier, and then he says, yeah, you can block either my Mutavolt or Dry Militant. It doesn't matter to me because I've got you dead right now. Six in the air, and two for one of these, that makes it eight. That puts Trent at negative one. That means we're moving to a third and final game here between Boros and Asper, Bernie and Tran. Yep, yep, absolutely. And with a quick update here, Jarrett Lacombe does win game number one. Red-white devotion up a game over Matt Toby playing Boros. 
So we see that our three versus six seed, uh, Lacombe, on the draw, did win that game. Yeah. So I think you felt you felt the red white devotion was going to win there, between uh, yeah. that and Boros. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you guys do see the sideboards on the screen yet again. Game three, is Utran going to consult his sideboard one more time to make sure everything's kosher? Do you change anything since you're on the play here as the Esper player? Uh, I think St. Collector gets a little bit better there. Even though he whiffed there, I don't think that should uh, get him two down because, again, it trades with all his ground guys for, at the very beginning. So I'm, I'm still cool with that. Uh, I don't think so. I think you just leave it and run it as is. I think, obviously, men not on a mulligan, being able to on time cast a Blood Baron on turn five mm -hmm. will result in victory on his side. But this is not a great matchup for Esper, and that's probably why Robert's here right now. I mean, we saw him beat a control deck earlier. Yep. Uh, he's, he's just able to put that kind of pressure on and say, oh, you don't have Supreme Verdict? All right, well, you're done. And that's just how it went that game. He just went guy, turn two, guy, guy, and... No verdict, no uh, no problem. And if you're burning, you've got some dodging to do. Blood Baron Scope is obviously terrifying. Yeah. So that thing ever shows up, it's going to be a tough game to win like we saw in game number one. Lucky for him, a lot of people have been playing the uh, two Blood Baron main, two in the sideboard. Tran has two in his main, one in his sideboard. So only three to worry about. I use only three lightly. Yeah, only three. Yeah, that's still, it. Still pretty good. And Robert has a couple trumps himself. He has Burning Earth, obviously very, very good against Esper. That's kind of like his Blood Baron there. Uh, it's real tough to deal with because even with Detention Tree, you're still taking a good amount of damage, wasting your whole turn to deal with it. And if Min has used the Detention Tree of the turn before on creatures, which we see often happen, then Blood or excuse me, Burning Earth comes down, you know, un, unopposed. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, obviously Burning Earth is fantastic against Esper if you can get it into play. Much better on the play as opposed to the draw, though. Yes. You know, that's, a, that's a big deal in this matchup. I think the play draw in this matchup is absolutely huge. That's why if you're Bernie, you know, you being the four seed against Esper as the five seed, winning game one was actually a pretty big deal because, you know, you might end up losing game number two, but you'd love to be on the play for game three after sideboard. Yep. But now he's in the draw here, and so, you know, he's hoping that uh, maybe Tran stumbles and fumbles around a little bit. But, I don't know, we'll see. I mean, that play draw rule now that's being enforced is a big deal. Yeah, I think it's changed the game a, a good amount, especially in these three-game series. Uh, something like the Invitational when we first kind of like implemented it in our tournament structure, not a huge deal when you're playing five, best of five. Mm -hmm. you know. But now it really can set the tone for a three-game thing, a series, pretty easily. All right, so we'll see what Min's got here, see if he's keeping. Looks like he's keeping. I see lands and spells. So. I see a Revelation. I see a Jace. There's a Pity Needle. I see Island. Needle is a huge card to sideboard in in this matchup. Yeah, you need huge. it against it. Uh, Need against Johnny. It's just not tough just to that. Beat. I mean, Mutavolt is so very good against Esper. You see, Bernie's going to take a mulligan down here, uh, at least to six. Now, one card I actually want to bring up to you, one card that I haven't seen a lot of sideboards recently, Sin Collector, uh, which actually feels like a pretty good card in this matchup. But overall, we haven't seen a lot of Sin Collectors recently. Yeah. Uh, a very, very powerful card that people just aren't playing. You know, is that a card that you feel is just you know not really well positioned for the format right now? You know, there's a, there's a lot of Esper. This Boros deck is actually susceptible to that card. You think it's going to see a, maybe an influx of that card? I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that because I don't <laughs> want, I don't want people to play that card. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those cards I was just hope would go away. <laughs> and I I actually was uh, mentioning it to Harry when we were fixing his deck up, and he's not a big fan of it. Uh, I think it's just a phenomenal card against control decks. Like it's just it's backbreaking because you board out all your your verdicts and rats, and you'd be surprised a couple two one sin collectors beating your face in, and also putting pressure on Jace if you have Jace out, taking all precious spells out of your hand. I think sin collector is a phenomenal card. Got a quick update here for you guys. Our one versus eight seed match is over. Hal Brady does win over Colin Chilbert. Green red devotion. Moving on. That's what you said. Yep. You thought would happen That's because where I had all those my, planeswalkers. My nickel on that one, so. Again, four Domri, four Garrick, two copies of Xenagos in the main deck. Um, taking a look at a uh, Breedy sideboard. No more. Uh, no more Planeswalkers on the board. Uh, just four copies of Miscutter Hydra. That's and it. Yeah, that's it. So uh, <laughs> he did not look like he had any intentions of losing the control deck, yeah. and he uh, dispatched Chilbert pretty quickly. Yeah, Miscutter Hydra doesn't seem like that's big of a deal because Esper doesn't give, you know, doesn't care about it at all because yeah, they kill with their black spells. But blue white. That's a pretty uh, pretty monstrous thing to deal with. Yeah, I would say that Blue White cares quite a bit. They As do. you see, Tran is going to play another Temple of Silence to get the ball rolling, get those tap lands out of the way now. Bernie just started off with a Dry Millicent. No, now, here's the Pitting Needle. It's going to be on a Johnny, I'm pretty sure. A Johnny is just devastating. We'll okay. get an update, too. Mutavolt is pretty good, but a Johnny is the backbreaker. And he does name a Johnny, so the Planeswalker is no more. Yeah, we're going to see a Sync Collector come on Min's side here. It's going to be pretty good here, I think. 
There's a Sacred Foundry from Bernie. See what his play is going to be, if he has any. And there is a Daring Skyjack going to pass the turn back. So we'll see if Tran does have the necessary lands to cast the Sin Collector. And he does. Is he going to hit? Precinct Captain, a Johnny yep. Frontline Medic, and a Sacred Foundry. He says, I want to break Johnny. those down. He almost hits. He hits Johnny pretty much. So. Yeah. <laughs> he knows that uh, you know there's a dead card right. in the hand. Robert actually has access to one copy of Wearing Terror, which I know he brought in, so yeah. this could be some kind of uh, blowout in the process in the future here. And I don't know if you caught Tran's draw set, but he drew a Supreme Verdict for the turn, and that's going to be a fantastic draw for him. So yeah. Bernie does have the third land, and you know he's got to work his way through a Sin Collector now, which is not easy. So in they come. Skyjack's going to trade with Sin Collector, come across for two, put Tran down to 16, and we'll see what Bernie wants to play this turn. Going to take two, go down to 16, and he's going to play a Frontline Medic and pass it. Yeah, and if, I don't know if Tran has the other, I don't know if he has Jace in his hand, but if he has Jace, I would definitely know he has Elspeth. Okay, so is Elspeth and Jace on the farm? I think he might have a Jace. I mean, he's definitely got an Elspeth, he has a Verdant, and he has a Basic Planes in his hand, so uh, his hand is really good right now. Yeah. So he's going to Planes. He's going to Verdant here. Yeah. And the problem here is that you see his lands, he doesn't have double blue for Jace at this moment. Right. So they're trying to figure out what zone does the uh, Verdant go into. Uh, it's Graveyard, yeah, definitely. And now here's a couple of here's a couple of doofuses and precinct captain and, and dried militant and Bernie basically saying I hope you don't have another verdict. He draws, draws a hollowed fountain. What a great uh, what a great draw there. Yeah. And now it's going to be the architect of thought. An easy plus one here because uh, without a Johnny ever being able to threaten, he's able to just keep plus one. And then yeah. these uh, the dorks on the Boros side. Kind of get a little dorkier there. Now, you say an easy plus one, but Boros Charm was the draw off the top here for Bernie. Oh, yeah. That's another good card, right? Yeah. So, Precinct Captain's going to go towards Tran. Yeah. And Militant's going to go towards Jace. He's so, he's going to get a soldier. I still like the plus one here because it put him on having to draw Boros Charm. Mm -hmm. I mean, now it's really going to backfire because this is a situation where you're like, oh, well, at least I get his Boros Charm out of your hand. Well, you're not min on five land with an Elspeth in your hand. You really want that six land. So. Yeah. And so. I think you have to. Uh, I think you got to fire away with the uh, with the Boros charm here. So, see some shoulder shrugging going on. So not quite sure exactly what the problem is. Maybe they're wondering life totals, things of that nature. So we'll get that all figured out for you guys. But uh, you know, once play does continue, I think we see Boros charm finish off that uh, Jason again. If you're Bernie, you're kind of crossing your fingers here. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot that has to go right for you to win this game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Min not if he misses the six land drop here can definitely give Robert a chance. Yeah, but th the thing there is that if he misses a six land drop, that means he's drawing a spell. That's true. Could so. be a Blood Baron, something even worse, so we'll find out. So there is Jace Buddy in the Dust, and we'll see what Tran draws. It's... Uh, yep, <laughs> it's that guy. It is Blood Baron of the Scopa. Speak of the devil. And he shall appear. Mutavolt going to come into play. Frontline Medic going to come into play here for Bernie. And he's just going to kick it back. So Blood Baron's in the house off so the top. So he's holding Revelation and Elspeth. Yeah. So if he draws the land, he gets a, a detention sphere. That's a I, really think, good draw. I think you're Revelation for two here in the attack, mm -hmm. right? I guess. Explain that. Explain why you want to do that instead of uh, instead of playing the D-Sphere. Uh, you're going to gain four life. You're going to get a 17. There's no way he's even going to put him, come close to that kind of damage. And then the next turn, you get to have your six land and then an Elspeth completely clog the board. And there's really nothing Bernie can do. Okay. I mean, I don't see it being a bad play otherwise. I mean, this is just safer, keeping the board more clear. Um, but did he not attack? Yeah, I mean, he made no attacks this turn. I mean, no profitable attacks because Attention Sphere took care of the took yes. care of the frontline medic. You I see like Jace it. is going to minus here. Revelation, Supreme Verd, and Doomblade. No right. real good split. Take the two, Paul, because we already have a Revelation. Yep, that's how I feel, and that's what he's going to do. He's going to take the two removal spells. Rev going to go to the bottom shelf, pass the turn back confidently. Bernie going to draw his card. And the window is closing here. Yeah, definitely getting real shut. <laughs> the blinds are coming down. Darkness spreading. Yep. It's like we the movie Silent Hill. It is. We used to call it the Icy Grip. That's what uh, we used to call uh, is that it. We, yeah, we? We? I think you're using we as in yeah. you? No, no, the world. Right? Oh, okay. Right? Okay. <laughs> right, right. Oh, wait, no, just me. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Blood Baron going to come across in the red zone. Real tough guy when you got a Supreme Verdict in your hand. Or, you know, this Planeswalker. Yeah. So Elspeth is going to come in. Three soldiers are going to come into play. And, you know, this is the big difference between being on the plane on the draw in this matchup because, you know, th I think this game is much different if Bernie's on the play. Yeah, yeah. Min is definitely on his heels there. But this game, Min's actually never never left the driver's seat. Here. Yeah. 
uh, control you know, the entire time. This is the tough part, too, because, you know, for Burning, it's like if you draw Burning Earth or something like that, it's just like, eh, it doesn't really do anything. And you see Burning knows that, yeah, I can't overcome this. So Min Tran is moving on to the semifinals, defeats Robert Burning. Your 5 seed Esper is coming on through, and he'll be playing against... He'll be playing against Green Red Devotion tomorrow morning on that okay. side of the bracket. Yeah. I uh, got my money on Min, just because uh, just a pro Esper kind of guy. Uh, Esper, if you're also playing against Green Red Devotion, you're I think you have a much much better situation than if you're blue white control. Yeah.